Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with chapter four, transient uh, heat conduction, based on the textbook of Sengel and Gajar, the fifth edition. And we have started the chapter by looking at what is transient heat conduction. We have seen that it is how temperature changes as a function of time. That is the simplest way of describing it. We've looked at practical applications and then we've looked at a very simple approach uh, that was derived from first principles which was called the lumped system approach. However, that approach had certain limitations which was described by the build number which is the ratio of the conduction resistance divided by the convection resistance and that approach would normally give us a good answer if the build number is smaller than 0.2. But if we look at the build number in general, which is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by characteristic length divided by K, then there are other indications that can help us to identify if the lump system approach is a good approach or not. First one is we want low heat transfer coefficients. So normally the body must be in an environment where there's not forced convection. The body must be small. And then thirdly, the thermal conductivity must be high. So those are normally the three things which would make it possible that, or the three requirements that, we, that would ensure that the build number approach would work well. Then, to make things more simple, we've started with simpler, with the most simple geometries, or some of the most simple geometries that we consider in engineering, and that is the plane wall, a long cylinder, and a sphere. Okay. And from first principles, using the energy equation, uh, this, these geometries, the heat transfer through it was solved. But the solution was quite complicated and it has been summarized in your textbook in table 4.1. We will refer to it again today. And in that table, very, very important, is the fine print in terms of how and when you should use it. And then as an outflow of that table, there are six other equations that we can typically use. The first equation would be typically when we use the, uh, the, the first, only the first term approach, and the second one where we want to get the temperatures in the center. We've done an example, and today we're going to do a second example. And the example we are going to do is based on the example in problem 461 in single and the jar and it is about a 65 kilogram beef carcass the k value is given and the alpha is given and it's initially at a temperature at a uniform temperature of 37 degrees celsius and it is to be cooled by refrigerated air at minus 10 degrees Celsius, flowing at a velocity of 1.2 meters per second. The average heat transfer coefficient between the carcass and the air is 22, treating the carcass as a cylinder of diameter 25 centimeters and height 1.4 meters, and disregarding the heat transfer from the base and the top surfaces. Determine how long it will take for the center temperature of the carcass to drop to 4 degrees Celsius. So this is very important with, uh, with meat to get the temperature down. But at the same time, the rate of cooling shouldn't be so high that they should be freezing, which normally occurs obviously on the surface. So the first part of the problem is to determine how long will it take before the center temperature decreases to a de temperature of 4 degrees. And then secondly, to determine if freezing will occur. And then lastly, to determine the heat transfer from the carcass. So let's start and write an example. And this example is the beef carcass to be considered as a cylinder with a diameter of 240 millimeters and a length of 1.4 meters or 1,400 millimeters. 
The initial temperature of the carcass, when it would go into the refrigerator, is 37 degrees Celsius. The mass of it is 65 kilograms. The thermal conductivity is equal to 0.47 watts per meter Kelvin. The alpha is equal to 0.13 multiplied by 10 to the minus 7 square meters per second. And Cp is equal to 4180 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And the outside temperature of the refrigerator is minus 10 degrees Celsius. The velocity over the carcass is 1.2 meters per second, and the heat transfer coefficient is equal to 22 watts per square meter degree Celsius or Kelvin. Okay. So we have to determine the time for the carcass to drop to a temperature of 4 degrees. And that would be at the center. So the time T for the temperature in the center to be 4 degrees Celsius. Remember T0 we used to indicate it is in the center. Okay, then also to determine if there would be freezing at any point. Now, you can go and calculate every, everywhere you want, but a good educational guess would be, you know, normally the, sur the outside surface. So, we would like to determine the temperature on the outside surface, and I cannot use a O for that, because that is indicating the center, so let's use S for that. So that's the surface. Okay. Maybe to just make sure about these temperatures. Let's also indicate here in the center. Oh, okay, so there's the center temperature and there's the surface temperature that we need to calculate. So we need to cal calculate the surface temperature and then thirdly, the heat transfer from the carcass. <coughs> Before we continue, um, I receive uh, lots of questions from students about the units. Because as you will see, sometimes the units of the transfer coefficient is in watts per square meter degree Celsius, and other times it is in Kelvins. And some of these units, for example, the K value is in Kelvin, and here again uh, it is in degree Celsius, and that confuses you. Okay. So it doesn't really matter. You can write the heat transfer coefficient also as 22 watts per square meter Kelvin because the heat transfer coefficient has been determined in an environment where we've got the delta T, the temperature difference. And the temperature difference in degree Celsius and in degree Kelvin is exactly the same. Okay. And the same with the CP values has been determined with temperature differences and in general, all the units, does it matter if you've got them in Kelvin or degree Celsius, the absolute values would still be the same. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. The only place where you have to be very, very careful is with the radiation heat transfer, where you have the temperature to the fourth. We have to use the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so don't worry about it at this stage. So, if we now look at this problem, and it has been told to us that we can neglect the transfer from there and there, and we can assume it is a cylinder, then it is very easy for us if we look at table 4.1. Okay, if you can look at that table for me, table 4.1 in the meantime while I write it down. So there it is on the on the PowerPoint, and specifically then for the cylinder, the non-dimensionalized temperature difference is n equal 1 to infinite of J1 lambda n divided by J0 square lambda n plus J1 square multiplied by lambda n 
and it is e to the minus lambda n squared multiplied by tau multiplied by j0 in the point lambda n multiplied by r divided by r0 where the eigenvalues lambda n multiplied by j1 lambda 1 in lambda n divided by j0 divided by lambda n is equal to the build number okay where the build number is equal to the volume divided by the surface area. You agree? So, isn't there supposed to be a 2 over lambda in the um, Where? Oh, here when I've written it down. Yeah. So, 2 divided by lambda in. Okay. You all agree? Ah, you remember I keep on coming back to that. It's a trap. Remember the build number is not equal to the volume divided by the surface area. This is only valid for the lump system approach. Where do we get the build number? If you can zoom in, yeah, you've got it there, Tamaran. So if you look at the table, the build number is given for us as the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the radius divided by k. Okay, so that's a table and it really looks very complicated in terms of the calculations for it. And if you look at it immediately, you see now you have to get a lambda n. Okay, so the lambda n you can maybe get from here if you've got the build number, but now where you get that. So it looks very complicated in getting all the values. Now, what should be remembered is that, and this is where it is maybe a little bit confusing also, is that this can actually be written as theta is equal to A1 e to the minus lambda n square multiplied by tau multiplied by j0 lambda n multiplied by r divided by r0 plus a2 e to the minus lambda n square tau j0, I'm not going to write everything down, plus again A3 e to the minus whatever. Okay. And this A1 is just actually this term here. Okay. The shorthand notation for that term. You see that? Okay. Okay, and in terms of the next set of equations, which are given as equations 4.23, 24, and 25 in your textbook, then for a cylinder, theta is then equal to the temperature distribution, TRT minus T infinite, divided by Ti minus T infinite is equal to a1 e to the minus lambda n square tau multiplied by j0 multiplied by lambda 1 multiplied by r divided by r0 for the case where tau is larger than 0.2. Okay, that is equation for 24 in your textbook, I think. Is that right? Equation 424. Okay. So what you should realize is that in the textbook, and we're going to get to it just now, when we're going to solve the, um, the build number, is that the values for A2 and lambda 2 and A3 and its lambda is not given in the textbook. Okay. Only the first solution is given. Okay, only the first one, up to there. Okay? However, very important, tau must be larger than 0.2. Now when we start solving a problem like this, in tau is actually the non-dimensionalized time. But they ask us how long is it going to take? So we do not have tau. 
So what do we do is we assume tau is larger than 0.2. We do the calculations and then we check. Okay. And you'll see in the textbook, and we've done it, that if tau is larger than 0.2 and we only use the first term, then the error would be smaller than 2%. So that is actually quite accurate. Okay. So if we now look at solving this problem, then for this car cost, the temperature distribution has now actually been given by that equation. You agree? Okay. So if we look at that, we can see that we've got the environment temperature, we've got the initial temperature, we've got the 4 degrees Celsius in the center at the specific point. So what do we need to get? We need to get the A1, the lambda N, and the J0. You agree? Okay. Okay, where do we get it? Well, we start with a build number because the build number gives us a solution to this. And the solution is given in the tables in your textbook. So, if we now look at the build number and we calculate it correctly as the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the radius divided by K, and that is equal to 22, the heat transfer coefficient, the radius is 120 millimeters, 0.12, divided by the thermal conductivity, which has been given as 0.47, and that gives us a build number of 5.62. So immediately we can also see that this build number is relatively large, but again, remember, we cannot now immediately say it is larger than 0.2, because with a lump system approach, it is calculated differently, so be careful. <laughs> Now, in terms of getting the lambdas and the A1 value, if you go and look in your textbook, I think it is table 4.2, uh, there it is, table 4.2, you'll see that the build number is given in that table, and then it is given for a plain wall, it is given for a cylinder and for a sphere. You guys see it? Okay. And for each one of them is given the lambda 1 value and the A1 value. Okay. So for this build number of 5.62, what would lambda 1 be and what would A1 be equal to? Take a look in your textbooks and see if you can get it. I don't know if it is too small for you to look there, but in any case. So typically for a build number of 5, lambda 1 is equal to 1.98 something, and for A1 is equal to 1.5 something. And then for 6, it is equal to 2.04 something, and the A1 is equal to 1.52. Okay. Now the question that all of you are going to ask is in the test and exams, 5.62, you know it's not there, you'll have to do linear interpolation. Must I do inter linear interpolation? The answer is no, you don't have to. So you can select the closest one, which in this case would be 6. Okay. I solved it on my computer, and the result of that was that I got a value of, for a build number of 5.62, a value of 2.027 and 1.517. Okay. Okay, so if we now come back to this equation, we can say yes, well at last now we've got that value and we've got that value. The other value that we need is J0. Okay, the Bessel function at the point lambda 1 multiplied by r divided by r0. So let's look at that term. Okay, so j0 multiplied by lambda 1 multiplied by r divided by r0 is equal to j0 multiplied by lambda 1 and lambda 1 is equal to 2.027. We've got it just now from the table. Multiplied by R. And what is R equal to? Remember, we want to first calculate the temperature in the center. So R is equal to zero. Okay. So it is zero divided by 0 
So it is equal to J0 at the point 0. You see? Okay, now if we look at the Bessel functions, if we can look at the table again quickly, there you can see them, table 4.3. Now you see an eta there. Okay, so table 4.3. There's an eta, there's J0 in the point eta, and J1 in eta. Okay. And for 0, the J0 value would be equal to 1, exactly. While it would be equal to 0 at that point there. At 0 0.1, it is equal to 0.99. Mine seven five, and that value would be equal to 0 0.04 triple nine. Okay, so in our case, it is very easy. J zero at zero. That would be equal to eta. So eta is equal to zero. Is equal to one. Okay, and J one. At point 1 would be equal to 0. We're not going to use it now immediately, but we will use it later on. I'll come back to that value there. Do you agree? Does it make sense for you? Right. So now we can go back to our equation in terms of solving the temperature at the center. Which is equation 427 and the center is equal to T0 minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite is equal oh, uh, yeah, sorry is equal to A1 E to the minus lambda 1 square multiplied by tau Okay, now how do I get to that equation from this equation? If I look at this equation, this was the one that we were busy with. This, busy with. You said now we've got that one and that one and we're solving that one because that is equal to zero, or equal to one. Okay, so that term is just equal to one. Okay, so all those equations, that term just disappears at the center. Does that make sense? Right, so now we can solve that. Okay, the temperature at the center, we like to know how long will it take before the temperature in the center is 4 degrees Celsius, minus, minus 10. Because the refrigerator is at the temperature of minus 10. Divided by the initial temperature, which was 37, 37 minus, minus 10. And that is equal to A1. And A1 is equal to 1.517 multiplied by E to the minus lambda 1 square, 2.027 square multiplied by tau, okay. from which we can solve that tau is equal to 0 0.396. Okay. Are we relieved? Yes, because tau is larger than 0.2, so the one-term approximation would be valid. Okay, now tau is equal to alpha t divided by r0 squared is equal to 0.396. Okay, alpha has been given as 0.13 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by t divided by the radius which is equal to 0.12 square is equal to 0.396 and from that we can solve that the time t is equal to 43,865 seconds and that would be 12.2 hours.
Okay, so it will take 12.2 hours for that carcass. For the center temperature, which was 37, to drop to 4 degrees Celsius. Any questions? Anything that you do not follow? Okay. Right. Now, coming back to the problem again, it was only the first part that we've solved. We've solved the temperature at the center. Now we want to solve the temperature here. Looking at this equation, it can still be used. It is just about this term, R divided by R0. Previously, that was 0. Okay. Now it is not equal to 0. Now, in this case, it is going to be equal to 1. Okay. So, <coughs> we want to solve the lowest temperature. We are going to assume it is on the surface. And again, in terms of our equation for cylinder, the temperature distribution, temperature minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite is equal, equal to A1E to the minus lambda 1 square multiplied by tau multiplied by J0 multiplied by lambda 1 multiplied by R divided by R0. Okay. Okay. Now the build number is still the same. It hasn't changed. Okay, because the build number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by R0 divided by K. So it is still equal to 5.62. Therefore, the A1 and the lambda 1 that we've previously calculated or determined is still correct. You see? Okay, the only thing that changes is this term here. And that term, J0 multiplied by lambda 1 multiplied by R divided by R0 is equal to J0 in the point Lambda 1 is now equal to 2.027. Where do we get lambda 1 from? There it is. We've got it here from the table. It's the solution of the eigenvalues. That's the first one, and that's the one for A1. Okay, so that is lambda 1. Now multiply it by R. What would R be on the surface? The radius on the surface would be, would be 120 millimeters, 0.1. 0.12 meters from the center, and R0 is equal to 0.12. Okay. So that is equal to 1, so it is equal to J0 in the point 2.027. Okay. And that is equal to eta. Okay. So if we now go and look at the table, where we've got eta, J0 in eta, and J1 in eta. Okay. What many students now do, and this is a trap again, ladies and gentlemen, be careful. I've told you previously, there's J1, do you remember? But this is J1 at zero. Okay. Now we need J1 at, oh, sorry, J0, Oh, no, sorry, I'm confused. Wait a minute. Uh, I will get to this later. I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. Okay, I'm confused. Okay. Okay, eta 2, then J0 would be equal to 0.2239. You agree? Okay. And for 2.1, it is equal to 0.166. You don't have to go and do linear interpolation in the tests and exams. You can choose the closest one, which would be 2 in this case. If you do linear interpolation, if you go and solve it on your computer, it would be equal to 0.2083, and that value would be equal to 0.5748. So this is actually the one that we're going to use later on.
Okay? So, coming back to the equation, the temperature at any specific point, minus T infinite, divided by Ti minus T infinite, is equal to A1e to the minus lambda 1 square, multiplied by tau, multiplied by the Bessel function J0, multiplied by lambda 1 divided by, multiplied by R divided by R0. We want to calculate the temperature at the surface when the center temperature is 4. Okay. So the surface temperature is what we want to determine. Minus, minus 10, the environment temperature of the freezer, divided by the initial temperature which is 37. 37 minus minus 10 is equal to A1, which is equal to 1.517, okay, E to the minus lambda 2.027 square multiplied by tau. What is tau equal to? Tau is the non-dimensionalized time. And that we've already solved. 0.396 would represent 12.2 hours. This time here. So it is equal to 0.396 multiplied by J0 in that point, and that would be equal to 2.027. Oh, so, sorry, uh, 0.2. What did I do now? So it's that value there 0.2083. Is that correct? So, the only unknown is the surface temperature, and then the surface temperature can be determined as minus 7.1 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, this freezer is too potent. Okay. The freezing is going to occur, it's going to get to the, the center temperature of 4 degrees Celsius, but on the surface we're going to get freezing, which they do not want. Ladies and gentlemen, any questions so far on the temperature distribution? Okay. Now coming back to anybody still busy here? Can I raise it? You're still busy? Okay. okay, so let's look at what we are actually busy at and what does it really mean. So if we look at the fact that we've made an assumption that we are working with a cylinder. And the cylinder is 240 millimeters by 1.4 meters. So the ratio of this length to the diameter is approximately almost six. Okay. Now, originally, the, surf the temperature right through was 37. So if this is a graph of the temperature, and if we would go and measure the temperature right through the carcass, it was 37. Okay. If we put it in the freezer, what would happen? Immediately there would be heat transfer from the surface, and the surface temperature would drop. Do you agree? So the surface temperature is going to do that. The temperature in the center is not going to move. It's not going to change. Okay. And then something like that is going to happen. But with time, this temperature is going to drop. So the temperature is going to do something like that. Okay. So in this case, we have a temperature distribution where in the center, the temperature is 4. And on the surface, the temperature is equal to minus 7.1 degrees Celsius. Okay. If you don't believe me, just go back to these calculations where we've used R divided by R0 and you can go and calculate it for all those values. Okay, you're going to get a temperature distribution something like that. 
The other thing that is very important that we should remember is that an assumption was made that the heat transfer rate through that surface there is equal to zero and the heat transfer rate through that surface there is equal to zero. The heat transfer is one dimensional only. So from the center out in a radial direction. It would mean theoretically that with this specific problem, if we would now go and measure temperatures, then all those temperatures would be four degrees Celsius up to that point there and up to that point there. Okay. And all the temperatures there would be minus 7.1, that would be minus 7.1, minus 7.1, minus 7.1. And somewhere here would be the temperatures of zero. Okay, and there will be somewhere temperatures of three. But all the temperatures are the same at the same radius. Okay. This was an assumption to solve the equations. Very important that we remember that. Okay. So the heat transfer rate is only in one direction. What would happen in practice? We know that in practice there will also be heat transfer from that side. Okay. And therefore, this temperature distribution here close to that surface would not be correct. Except if this surface and that surface was insulated. If there was insulation, then the heat transfer rate can only be in one direction, in a radial direction. You all agree? Okay. So let's look at the heat transfer rate a little bit. And let's start with the heat transfer rate at T equals zero. Okay. So when the carcass is put in the refrigerator, let's calculate the heat transfer rate. So the heat transfer rate would then be equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area multiplied by the surface temperature minus T infinite because the heat transfer rate is from the surface. What is the heat transfer coefficient equal to? The heat transfer coefficient is equal to 22. Okay. What is the surface area of the heat transfer equal to? Pi multiplied by the diameter multiplied by the length. Okay. So the surface area for heat transfer is only that area there. An assumption of one dimensional flow only. Okay. You all agree? The heat transfer coefficient is 20. The surface area is pi multiplied by the diameter, gives us the perimeter, multiplied by the length, gives us the surface area. Multiplied by the temperature difference, which is 37 minus minus 10. That gives us a heat transfer rate of 1091 watts and that is equal to 1.1 kilowatt. Originally, when the carcass was put into the refrigerator. Now let's calculate the heat transfer rate at 12.2 hours. At T equal 12.2 hours. Okay. Then the heat transfer rate would be equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the surface area. Again, the surface temperature minus the environment temperature. Okay. Same calculation. The heat transfer coefficient is 22. The surface area is pi multiplied by the diameter multiplied by the length multiplied by the surface temperature, which is now equal to minus 7.1, okay, and minus, minus 10. And the heat transfer right now is only equal to 67.3 watts. So very, very small heat transfer rate. Thus, if we would now go and plot the heat transfer rate as a function of time and the temperature as a function of time. What would we get? 
we would get when t is equal to zero, the heat transfer rate is equal to 1091 watts. When T is equal to 12.2 hours, the heat transfer rate would be 67.3. There. Okay. And you can go and do it right through. And you're going to get something typically like that. Does that make sense? So that is going to be the heat transfer rate out of the car cost. If we look at the temperatures and we look at the center temperature. When T was equal to zero, that temperature was 37, the center. Okay. After 12.2 hours, the temperature was equal to four. So that is T zero, the temperature at the center. What happens to the temperature on the surface? The temperature at the surface originally when T was equal to zero was also equal to 37. So there, and then it would go down to minus 7.1 degrees Celsius. So that is the temperature at the surf surface, Ts. That's typically how they're going to decrease as a function of time. So you will remember that with the lump system approach we looked at the ratio of the resistances. And it means that in principle we've got now the following. Okay. So if we look at the resistance of conduction, that is now inside the carcass, in comparison with the resistance of the convective, the convective resistance on the outside, then it means that that would be equal to 5.62 and that would be equal to 1 on a scale, any scale. You can do it in millimeters, centimeters or meters. Okay. So what does it tell us? It tells us that the resistance for heat transfer in the carcass is actually very high. It's difficult to get the heat out. And that is why we have the temperature distribution. With a lump system approach, all the lines would fall onto each other because this resistance is very small. It is very easy to get the heat out. There's no temperature distribution inside the body. You remember that? Right, so what you will also see, and I didn't discuss it in detail, you'll see in the textbook there are also many equations for Q divided by Q max, etc. And if you prepare for the test and exam, you're going to wonder, well, is that not important? It is important. It's part of the work that you have to study yourself. So I, I'm not doing everything for you. I'm doing the most important stuff. But let's just bring it into perspective so that you can see what is happening here. It goes, it is about now suddenly Q max, not the transfer rate. Okay. So Q max is equal to M C P multiplied by Ti minus T infinite. And remember the heat transfer rate is equal to Q multiplied by delta T. Okay. So this Q is being used in transient heat transfer. Okay. Because after a time equal to zero, what we want to know is how much joules did we withdraw out of the body. Because we cannot really talk of the heat transfer rate, because if we talk about the heat transfer rate, we have to say at T equal that or T equal that, because it drops all the time. So the Q is how much heat we have removed out of the body in total. Okay, and that would be equal to MCP, the initial temperature, minus T infinite. So if we now look at the cylinder or the carcass, in terms of a mass, then originally everything was at 37 degrees Celsius. Then at T equal 12.2 hours, we have a situation where the temperature there is equal to 4 and the temperature there is equal to minus 7.1. Okay. So the question is what is Q max? 
Q max is the maximum that, has can, that can be taken out of this body and given the boundary conditions. And what would that be? That would be the case when this temperature there is minus 10, that temperature is minus 10, and that temperature is minus 10. So everything is minus 10. That would be Q max. That's all the heat that you can get out. Because there's still heat inside this carcass. It can still be cooled so that everything is at minus 10. Okay. So Q max, if we go and calculate it, remember, is then equal to the mass, it is 65, multiplied by the CP value, 4180. So it's MCP delta T, this equation I'm using here, multiplied by 37 minus minus 10, and that is equal to 12.77 megajoules of heat. Okay, now in the textbook you will also see that for a plane wall, a cylinder and a sphere, equations are given. For example, Q divided by Q max is equal to 1 minus 2 times the non-dimensionalized temperature distribution of the cylinder multiplied by J1 lambda 1 divided by lambda 1. Okay. Okay, so Q, okay, so if we now look at this, at these three cases, that would represent Q max. Okay, and that would represent Q. Okay, how much heat have we removed out of the body up to 12.2 hours? So, that is what we want to do. Q divided by Q max, 12.77 multiplied by 10 to the minus 7 is equal to 1 minus 2 times theta 0 of the cylinder. Now what is theta 0 of the cylinder? Theta 0 of the cylinder is just the non-dimensionalized temperature distribution. T0 minus T infinite divided by Ti minus T infinite. Okay. And T0 is equal to 4 minus minus 10 divided by 37 minus minus 10 and that would give us 0.2978. Okay. So if we do the substitution in here 0.2978 multiplied by J1 and this is where my J1 comes from that I was worried about 0.5748 divided by 2.027 and then that gives us 10.12 megajoules. Okay. So at 12.2 hours, 10.12 megajoules has been removed. Okay. Then Q average. What is Q average? Q average would just be this Q divided by delta T. So, if we look at that, that is equal to Q that we've removed. Q average would just be the average over the delta T. Okay. So that is equal to Q, which is equal to 10.12 megajoules divided by the time, which is then 43,000 seconds 865, and the result is 230 0.7 watts, sorry, this is heat transfer rate. Heat transfer rate is equal to Q divided by delta T, 230.7 watts. So, taking this into consideration, and you're a consulting engineer, and you must go and size this freezer, what would you do? What is important to look at? Okay. Obviously, in this case, we have a problem because the temperature is too low, or the heat transfer coefficient is too high. So the temperature can normally be selected and then it, would be, it will solve the problem of the freezing on the outside. Okay, that's the first thing. But the second thing is normally you have to size or specify the capacity of the refrigerator. 
Would 230 watts be fine? The answer is no, because that is the average. Because you have to take into, into consideration this peak. Okay. Now this peak in this case is incorrect because it's going to cause freezing, so you can, can go and correct it. But it is important that your refrigerator must obviously be able to run and remove the average, but it must also be able to do the pull down for you in the beginning. Okay. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, there's a question here in front. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. So the number one, the bad J1, you know this number one. Uh, okay, the J1 divided by lambda 1. Here is the J1, okay? And lambda 1 is um, that value there. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And that is the end of the lecture. <laughs>